My name is Philippe Cousteau, and I am CEO of Earth Echo International, a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to ocean conservation, youth leadership, and youth education. And uh, I went to university in the University of St. Andrews in Scotland and have a master's degree in history. Well, our mission is to foster extraordinary leaders to take action to protect and restore our oceans. And my sister and I founded Earth Echo about, about five years ago in honor of our father who was Philippe Cousteau Sr., the youngest son of Jacques Cousteau, who was my grandfather, who was well known around the world as the inventor of the aqualung or the scuba tank, and a pioneer in, in ocean exploration, who got his start in the 1940s, just after World War II, and subsequently created decades of, of documentaries filming everything from whales to, to, uh, to sharks and, and coral reefs, many of which no one had ever seen before. So we founded the organization in honor of my father, who worked with my grandfather for many years, but passed away in 1979, just about six months before I was born. And Earth Echo is dedicated to continuing his legacy, and we really believe that the best way to do that is to focus on how to empower a new generation to take action to protect and restore oceans. And that's not just to, to care and, and know about the importance of the oceans to our everyday lives, no matter where we live, our, our health as the, you know, the oceans are the life support system of this planet, but really how all of our choices have consequences. We have a saying at Earth Echo, it's not that you can make a difference, it's that everything you do makes a difference and that all of our choices have consequences and really helping a new generation to understand that, that we have the power to make and, 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 and mold the sustainable future that we all dream of. You know, as, as, uh, as CEO, my, my position ranges, uh, or what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, changes a lot. It ranges all over the place. I mean, a, a lot of my job is fundraising. For an organization as a as a nonprofit, that's you know that's our bread and butter. We have to raise money to be able to do the work that we do. So it's everything from uh, meeting with executives, uh, pitching sponsorships to companies, to uh, working on grants, proposals to foundations, to speaking to individuals and giving lectures and speeches about the work that we do. Uh, other work in, includes managing staff, uh, making sure that uh, the organization's uh, budgets are running smoothly, that uh, everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing and that we're on target for our programs and our deliverables, uh, as well as uh, a decent amount of travel to, uh, to achieve all of those different uh, duties. Uh, being able to, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time in New York and LA and traveling around, uh, around the country in, in general, actually talking to different groups and, and uh, corporations about what we do. I think the favorite part of my job is being able to work with people and seeing the results of our programs. Whenever I get to, uh, I, I speak at schools a lot, for example, with young people and, um, and, and recruit uh, uh, young people to engage in our programs. And whenever I see the results of our work, whenever I see that, that, that flash, that light bulb go on, that, 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 that passion get ignited in a young person, uh, and, uh, and they understand that they have the power to make this world a better place, and that they feel that empowered, because of our work, that is what makes my job why I get up in the morning. You know, the most difficult part of my job you know, is probably also the best part of my job. It is that it's, it's, not, it's not easy work trying to uh, cut through the everyday clutter that we're faced with. You know, the average person gets like a thousand brand hits a day, a thousand different advertisements of things that are thrown at us every day and that, that distract us from important issues. And it's hard to cut through that. Uh, it's very hard to, uh, to really reach people and help them understand that, that, that we all have a role to play and an important responsibility as citizens of this planet. Uh, so while I love doing that, because when we do cut through, we do reach someone and ignite that passion, that's the best part of my job, but also the hardest part of my job is, is actually doing that. Yeah, I, you know, I, I was certainly inspired by the legacy of my father growing up by, uh, by my grandfather. Uh, but really I, I saw them as, as just great heroes and great people that, uh, that inspired me to do what I'm doing now. Yes, because, of, because uh, you know, I was part of the family. They were my father and my grandfather, of course. But more just because they, they, um, they were great people and they did great works and they inspired me to understand that all of us can have, a, have an amazing role to play. Uh, no matter what our interests are. I studied history uh, you know, in university. 
knowing that as a communicator for these issues, I wanted to be able to study a lot of different things. So um, uh, I was really inspired by my father, grandfather, and other people. Uh, other people who, um, you know, Rachel Carson, um, John Muir, uh, the, uh, the Dalai Lama, people like that who dedicated their lives, Mother Teresa, dedicated their lives to trying to make this world a better place. So it wasn't just my family, but just great individuals that came before me that inspired me to do this work and, and, uh, and, and, and believe that, that I had the power to make a positive difference. Well, working, working in a nonprofit, uh, it's very important to understand finances and understand budgets and understand money. I mean, the world revolves around that. And as a nonprofit organization, it's, it's one of my main duties is raising money. So having a grounding, whether or not you're running the organization or not, I think having a grounding and understanding the principles of, of finance are important. Um, also, communication skills. Being able to speak, speak eloquently. Being able to understand how, um, how communications works, both giving speeches or speaking in front of a group of people, which is scary for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of individuals are, are worried about that, but it's something that if you work at it, you, anybody can get good at it. And it's, it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's, that's I think a, a big part of what I do is, is communications. So focusing on understanding business, how business works and finances, and then really also how to communicate your message and inspire people. Great. Follow your passion. I think that, that the overwhelming message that I find the overwhelming, from, from young people that do believe and do follow their dreams is that anything's possible, especially in the United States. And uh, no matter where you come from, no matter who you are, no matter what you do, uh, you can be a, be a part of the solution. And, uh, you, you know, to work in the environment, because a lot of young people care about the environment today, you don't have to run a nonprofit. You don't have to work in a nonprofit necessarily. It's great if you do. But if you're a doctor, if you're uh, a weatherman, I mean, for example, National Environmental Education Foundation, you know, of course, is runs all sorts of amazing opportunities and programs, education programs for, for doctors to understand how their work intersects with the environment, to, under, to help uh, meteorologists understand uh, how they can impart information to their viewers about how to be more environmentally friendly. So it doesn't matter what your job is, that, um, that you can't just pass it off to someone else as, as their problem, that all of us have to understand that, that, uh, that we can be part of the solution.